The fact that going viral has been affecting us a lot longer than the internet's been around is a weird science fact that boggles my mind. So evolution takes a minute, and by that I mean millions of years. And it's provided us with all of the things that make all of us great. Every living thing has evolved to fit and thrive in its environment. But as the people who are super pissed they didn't get raptured recently will always bring up every single time you mention this topic, there's some missing links and things in evolution that don't always add up at face value. And so obviously, if we don't know exactly how something happened a few hundred million years ago, Magic Sky Daddy did it. It has nothing to do with the fact that trying to decode the history of all life on our planet is kind of like taking every single encyclopedia in existence, shredding them, putting those shreds in piles, burning a couple of those piles, and then trying to put the pieces back together and figure out what every single encyclopedia ever said. Because the reality is that there is billions of life forms that have existed on this planet that we will never know about. Because many of them never lived in environments conducive to fossilization. Many more have been fossilized in places people may never find. And even the fossils we do find, like the ones you see at the Science Museum or the Museum of Natural History, they're usually only constructed around a couple bones that they did find. They almost never find a complete fossilized skeleton. Think about it. It makes sense. I find all kinds of bones out here in my pasture all the time, but never a complete deer skeleton or gopher skeleton. Just, you know, like a skull, perhaps. Or a chunk of vertebrae. Or even occasionally a few chunks of vertebrae and like a piece of a hip or something there. I don't, I don't know what this was, but it might have been a gopher. Who knows? Point being that very few things stay intact after they die, and even fewer of those pieces ever make it into the fossil record. And that's for stuff with bones. Stuff without bones needs to get, like, squished into the sediment to become part of the fossil record. And it's not just the fossil record. They also figure this stuff out by looking at genetics. And, I don't know, geology? Probably. Uh, these people are way smarter than me. I I'll just take their word for it. Point being that a lot of times when we're figuring out our past, we've got one partial page of that encyclopedia that tells us what was going on at one point, and a corner of another page that tells us what was going on at that point, and until we can find more pages, sometimes we need to make some educated guesses on how those pages in between may have been written. And that's how science is supposed to work. You make the best possible conclusions from the best possible evidence you currently have, and then when the evidence changes, your conclusion changes with it. Or, you know, it's a magic dude wearing robes in the sky. E equally plausible. But anyway, one of those missing pages in the evolutionary encyclopedia is one of the most important developments in the history of all life on Earth. And that is myelin. Now, myelin is kind of simple stuff. If you think of your body like a machine, your skeleton is the frame or the structure. Your muscles are the motors and hydraulics. And your brain is the control panel that's telling everything what it's supposed to be doing. And to get those signals from your brain to, well, everything else, you have a nervous system, which is like your body's wiring harness. And quite literally, your nervous system is, is basically wires. Now, wires are really good at sending electrical impulses, which is really how your brain communicates with the rest of your body. That's why we use wire for an electric fence. And as long as this electric fence isn't touching anything, that signal has no problem shooting through this wire. But the reason that this electric fence works, if it were on right now, I, I'm not feeling that tough, is because as soon as that wire is touched, that electrical impulse transfers into the thing that's touching it. So if the wire ends up touching something like this fence post that doesn't have an insulator on, that electrical signal stops here and enters this fence post, and nothing past this could get that shock or that electrical signal. So when you want to protect that electrical signal so it makes it to its final destination, you do what your health teacher told you to do, and you wrap it up. That's what rubber coating does on these wires, and that's the same thing myelin does for your nervous system. This is an evolutionary trait shared by nearly every vertebrate on earth and it's very hard to be a vertebrate without it because without myelin you can't get very big because those electrical signals can't travel very far and you can't move very fast because those electrical signals don't travel very fast that's why jellyfish aren't winning any races but Sedona is a very fast vertebrate right here. One that rolled in shit again. Why do you do that? The mystery with myelin in our evolutionary history is the fact that it just appeared practically overnight. Before 500 million years ago, there was no myelin, and then there was. And they really didn't find any evolutionary chain of events that explained how we evolved myelin. We just didn't have it, and then we did. And usually there's steps along the way to developing new things. Well, it turns out one of humanity's biggest nemesises may be exactly who we have to thank for this evolutionary trait that allowed us to become us. Sadly, anti-vaxxers are gonna love this shit, uh, because it turns out it was a virus. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger is generally not true. Look at polio. But in some cases, apparently it is. Some viruses can alter your DNA. It's called retroviral DNA. And generally, they do this because it makes our bodies more hospitable to them. This is what HIV does. It changes our DNA and allows the virus to be successful in our body. And sometimes those viruses make inheritable DNA changes, which means that altered DNA can be passed on to your offspring. And this isn't as uncommon as you might think, 8% of the human genome stems from retroviral DNA. Now, in many ways, that's not great. Tons of cancers that we get are because of that. Some appear 
here to do nothing but occasionally every once in a while and maybe just this once i don't know i haven't done that much research uh it, it helps us out and that was the case with myelin some ancient virus 500 million years ago changed our dna and allowed us to start creating myelin and i'm sure that many of the things that original virus infected probably died but the ones that didn't passed that gene on and that allowed us to get bigger to get faster to grow spines which leads me to believe that maybe we should start infecting congress with new types of viruses to see if they can grow a spine it's worth a shot right i mean what's the worst that can happen but the really amazing point of all of this is that sophie and Harley and every vertebrate on Earth, including every one of us, owes our existence to the fact that some organism 500 million years ago got the sniffles and the virus that gave him the sniffles was for once a gracious house guest and brought a gift. A gift we all benefit from today with our very existence. And the fact that an infection intertwined instructions to improvise insulation to impart information instantly, that one took a while. Well, that is pretty mind-boggling.